Hi everybody, Ben Mays with Williams Soaring Center and ClearNav Instruments. Today I'll show you how to use the ClearNav square display variometer, or the ClearNav variometer system. I was flying in the wave the other day and I was talking with a couple other pilots that were trying to work on how to force it in the climb mode. I thought this would be a good video to shoot. Uh, additionally, went over switching through menu items, uh, using the thermal assist for the wave instead, you being able to switch between the actual thermal assist coat can and the dropping of the, the dots to see where your track has been, utilizing the map system and a few features like that. So if you uh, are looking for something specific uh, about the ClearNav variometer system, if you look in the description, there'll be an index of times of which individual uh, items are spoken about. Otherwise, uh, if you like the video, uh, please like and subscribe at the end. And if you have any additional needs, questions afterwards, contact us at Williams Soaring Center or clearnav.net. Thank you. Here we are in the back of the Williams Soaring Center ASK21B, looking at the ClearNav variometer system. This is our square display. We have a climb of 3.5 knots going here in the wave. That's only a 10 second average. We're gonna force it into, into climb mode so we can get our top to bottom climb average. As we hold down the left arrow, it's going to switch in. Now we have two averages. Our top average is going to be our 40 second average as it clocks up on the time there. Our bottom number will be our top to bottom climb average. That'll be continuous until we force it out of climb mode. We can see wind speed and direction with the wind arrow relative to the glider and also a numerical heading and wind speed there. We can see that we're climbing at about two knots. We can click go and we can change the volume on this front screen so we can turn up the vario there. And we can also continue to cycle through the other menus. We can also see our return to destination Williams in the bottom right hand. The top number is the 40 second average. The bottom number is over the last seven and a half minutes. See the timing? Yeah. So normally the thermal assistant, the average would be over whatever our rate of turn is. But because we haven't done a full 360 yet, it's based on 40 seconds because that's the maximum average time we want. If we did a 360, whatever our turn rate was, say we were turning at a rate of 23 seconds, that's what the top average would be, oh, is our okay. last one turn. Okay. But because we forced it into climb mode, yeah. so our average is going up. So see our average dropped to 4.8? Yep. So our average is dropping, we want to turn back the other direction. Okay, so back to the left? Yep. yep. All right, now we're going to talk about switching through the on-screen menu. So if you hit go, we can get volume and go up or down. If we hit go again, we can get the scale. So see the vario size on the side, depending on the rate of climb, you might want to only see four knots at a time. That ticker bar slides below the arrow once you get above that. So some people don't like that. So if you hit go and change your scale up to eight knots, if you're above six and that's, you don't want that zero sliding down, or you can go up to 16. You can also hit go again and switch between cruise and climb vario if you want to see your speed to fly push pull bars, or if you wanted to see the vario. Most people like seeing the vario on the side there. If you hit go again, or if you just leave it alone, it'll go back to the McCready side. One setting. of the other nice features is we can use for navigation is using the thermal assistant. By clicking the right arrow one time, it's gonna switch me to my thermal assist. For those that are used to you looking at the Coke can, if you press the up arrow or down arrow when using thermal assist, you can go to the overhead view where it's dropping dots. A lot of people are used to this from some of the UD, some of the other features. Again, I still have my average climb uh, my 40 second average, my top to bottom average, and then the vario on the side there. But we can see that I'm dropping my track similar to what we were on the clear nav. So here you can see we need to navigate to the left to be back into our line a little bit. It gives a north orientation. There's many settings you can go through as far as north up or north down, but we're tracking up this line pretty well. All right, so here's a little bit further in the thermal assisting screen. So you can see we've had a track or two back and forth along our lines. Again, there's our average uh, over the last six minutes and uh, we're now going southbound. So by clicking the right arrow one time, that's what got me there. If I click it again, I can change the McCready setting. Again, you could do that on the main screen, but if you want a bigger block, you keep going to the right. We can switch our speed to fly band, see our winds, see a big wind screen, a big navigation screen, uh, depending on what you want displayed on the screen. Again, this is just slowly clicking the right arrow to navigate. There we can change the water ballast, we can change the bugs. Ultimately, we get over to the menu button. Like By holding down. the left button down consistently, that is gonna take us back to our flying screen. 
at our flying screen. Again, we can see that we're forced into climb mode here. We can see Williams and our navigation bar. That's our glide slope. So we're well above glide slope, that little black dot over the, the median there. And we'd have to turn hard uh, to the left is that black bar to get back okay. to Williams. Can I turn on in and go and north? I click back yep. to the right, to take the right. me back to my thermal assistant screen. So here we're making our turn back uh, to the north. So we can see how well a student here tracks those dotted lines. Again, that would be the same thing. Most people would zoom in on the big square display or the big uh, ClearNav 1, ClearNav 2 display. If I hit go, I can change the scale on that. I can zoom in or zoom out if you want a, a finer uh, definition of your line. Uh, you know, these same features are the overhead that we can use. As we dive in here a little deeper into the thermal assistant uh, options. Again, I'm gonna continue to point out what we're seeing here. We click right one time, the thermal assist is gonna come up. We click the up arrow, now we have our dots. If we hit go, we can change the scale up with up or down arrows, so that's zooming in and zooming out effectively. On the bottom, you can see that scale change. See, that's 0.5 nautical miles and the scale bar next to the bottom average. We can click go and change to north up, goal up, or track up orientation, uh, depending on what you want to see. Again, this would be mostly used in a thermal setting, so you can see these dots, the sea wind drift, things like all? that. So that would be why you would change That'd between be north up, goal up. But yeah, we can use good. this feature for the wave, um, as, uh, as we've been seeing, especially if this is your only means of, of navigation. <laughs> you don't have a big That's screen and panel you don't want to yeah. uh switch between the two big screens it's just another situational awareness enhancer about well am i in my am i in my track or am i not again those dots will not so start until you force left, it right, into right, climb right, mode though unlike the flight computer right. that's uh, displaying right, dots now we're going to go over switching yeah. screens so we see the te our preemptive climb over our netto is 1.2 knots uh, we see wind at 23 we forced it into climb mode here uh, we're 26 miles out of williams now we're going to switch to the main menu screen so by holding that right arrow down consistently we can get our flight menu now we're going to or our menu and we can navigate up and down with the up and down arrows so if we come down to tools click the left arrow we're going to get over here and we were actually having a conversation about true airspeed versus indicated airspeed up in the wave so we're up at about 10,000 feet. We can see as we're flying about 49 knots, uh, climbing at a knot or so, our indicated airspeed was 49. Our true airspeed was 56. Uh, we can continue through some of those information screens, get some sensors, view systems, things of that nature. If we hold down that right arrow again, we can get into our here into our screen we're going to now navigate down to the navigation screen where we can go through we could switch our turn points we can uh, select and add a task if you were tasking with this device we don't typically do that but now we're going to pull up our map um, it does have a pretty basic map we could do some navigation with it it's not not the the greatest there if we want to go back to our flight screen simply go up and click the right arrow or hold the left arrow consistently Again, have to force it back into climb mode there. All right, so now we can see that we've been climbing for 19 minutes at a knot and a half. But we had forced it into climb mode. I can force it out of climb mode by holding down the left arrow again, and it's going to take me to my netto uh, airspeed, which is just showing what, or the netto lift. So what is the air doing, not necessarily the glider through the air, like TE. We're gonna go navigate to menus, and now we're up at 11,000 feet. We're gonna hold down the right arrow again. We're gonna come down here to glider settings. There's my altitude. There's my outside air temperature. Got a neat, neat one to look at, eight degrees, 10,000 feet. There I can set my margin return height, change my uh, weight, my polar, everything in my glider settings. If I drop back, uh, hold back down the right arrow, sorry, left arrow rather, That'll take me back to my flying screen and I'll see that netto lift of 1.7. All right, in the last two little clips here, we're gonna zoom out a little bit. Right now we're on a flat glide, out of climb mode, uh, gliding south down to, I believe, Rumsey Canyon out of Bear Valley. But what I'm looking at is we were playing with speed to fly. We're cruising pretty good now. We're about 65, 70 knots, which is kind of fast for the K21. But we don't have it in climb mode. What I'm looking at is my netto lift. 
right? So as I'm flying along and I'm not really worried about climbing anymore, you can see over in the barrier, we're climbing about two knots. Um, you know, as we climb and get into a climb, the TE or the, the uh, preemptive climb pops up. That's that gray box asking, do I want to climb now? But as I'm gliding straight ahead, I'm just worried about that netto lift uh, as I'm in a flat glide. I'm trying to tell him I'm in good air. So if I'm, you know, I don't want to see my right now lift. So if I'm just dropping along and flying, you know, uh, Am I, am I in good air? You know, plus one is still uh, descending 100 feet a minute, but what is my netto lift doing as I'm trying to run these little energy lines? See, I did force it back into climb there, and so now I can see that I'm averaging down, which is okay information, but I like to keep it on that netto lift instead. So as we drop back, here's my netto as we're climbing along. We're netto uh, 1. Uh, 2.0, 2.1, you know, basically it's zero sync as we're climbing along, but that netto number helps me, especially in the convergence of the wave. Am I in good air? Am I in bad air? What's the general trend? Not so much what am I doing? I'm up at 13,000 feet. So at this point, I'm not trying to climb much, but I'm just trying to stay in the good air. And then this is giving me my speed to fly number, which is obviously going to stay close, slow because we're in the climb the whole time. So uh, hope represented us. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you have any additional questions, you can contact ClearNav Instruments at Williams Soaring Center, either through the Williams Soaring Center website or clearnav.net. The uh, phone number's on the bottom of both the websites there. I'll also leave phone number and contact information in the bottom description. Again, if you're gonna watch the video multiple times, you can go find your specific sections you're looking for in the video descriptions below. Please like and subscribe, and we'll be having more video content come out shortly. If there's any other content you'd like to see, uh, please leave a comment or shoot an email and we'll uh, produce any videos you'd like to see and, and keep trying to provide put that information out there. Thank you all for uh, tuning in. Hope you all enjoyed.